we all have wonderful memories of comfort foods you know when you think of things that you ate when you were a child growing up those kind of things those comfort food foods that that take you back to a time and a place where you felt secure and comforted and safe all those uh, it's like when I get sick, I want chocolate milk because Granny always gave me chocolate milk. Cornbread and beans because I grew up with that. That's just like a really comforting meal. I've heard a lot of people say that macaroni and cheese is a comforting meal to them. So there's all those various different things and of course uh, different things for different people. So some people, you know, some other type of food might be their comfort food. But even desserts I think of as comfort foods. Uh, cobblers like peach cobbler, blackberry cobbler, those kind of things, they seem so comforting to me. And another one of those desserts that does that the same way are cream pies, especially chocolate and butterscotch. Those are the two that always come to mind. I really love them and they really remind me of growing up at Granny's and, and just eating anywhere I would go to eat in Appalachia. That might be a common thing that was on the potluck table or at someone's house that they had a cream pie. Maybe it was coconut, maybe it wasn't chocolate or um, or butterscotch, but anyway, just like a comfort food, those pies like that. Uh, kind of the same as apple pie and blueberry pies, those kind of fruit kind of things like the cobblers. But when I was growing up and Granny first let me start trying to cook, I always wanted to cook, and one of the first things I tried to learn how to make was like but those kind of pies. And I would make butterscotch and I would make chocolate. Um, and sometimes they turned out good and sometimes they would run all over the, the pie plate when you cut a piece, you know, but I still, they were still good and we still ate them. But as I, you know, as time went on and I was a better cook, I did better. But several years ago, one of my uh, cousins was at my Granny Gazzy's house and I don't know what she was doing, but she found a recipe from our, our, both of our Aunt Faye. Aunt Faye was one of Granny's oldest sisters and she was like a, she was almost like a second uh, grandmother to me, to all of us, because her and Woodrow, her husband, they lived near Granny Gazzy. And as Granny Gazzy got older, they always went back there to, to check on her. So most of the time, if you went to visit Granny Gazzy, they were there too. Sometimes they slept there, even even though they had a house. They, they had a bedroom there at Granny Gazzy's just to make sure that she was okay. So, so many of my memories are, are tied to Aunt Faye and Uncle Woodrow along with Granny Gazzy. It was like they come in a threesome, you know, which was really wonderful to for all of us kids. Uh, and wonderful that they could be there to support Granny Gazzy like that as she got older. Anyway, so she found a recipe that was written, uh, handwritten by Faye, and she sent, thought I might like it, and she sent it to me, I scanned it and sent it to me, and it was for a chocolate cream pie. So I made it, and it was wonderful, and I didn't have to worry about it sliding all over the pan or anything, and so ever since then, uh, that's the pie, that's my go-to cream pie. Um, that, I, that we really enjoy. And I've blogged about it over the years on the Blind Pig and the Acorn and I think other people really enjoy it too. So I'm gonna show you how to make it today. But a little bit about Faye though, uh, I could really just sum her up in one little, uh, one little sentence that Pap used. Faye Rogers was a mighty fine woman. That was what he said about her. That that's just, she was all around good, good person, just a, uh, just like an, a motherly type to all of us kids, but just a really good person helping in the community doing all those things But she was also a tremendously good cook and she died when I was in high school Maybe I just graduated from high school actually I believe I had but I had not met Matt yet So I was young. I had, I had not met him. I think I was about 21 when I met Matt So it was prior to that between that and high school of course I could look up and tell you the exact date But off the top of my head, I can't remember but what I do remember was she died suddenly. Nobody expected it. She wasn't sick. And just that week before uh, that she died, Granny wanted to go. You, typically when we went to Granny Gazzy's, she lived out uh, in Rangers on 64. And we would only go on Sundays to eat Sunday dinner. That's most of the time that we went. But for some reason, Granny wanted to go during the week to see Granny. Uh, Gazzy to do something to take or something I'm not sure and she wanted me to go with her and I didn't really want to go I was you know I was uh, had other things to do I was you know whatever was going on in my teenage life or my uh, early 20s life I didn't want to go with granny but she just kept on and on and on until I gave in and went with her and thought oh, I'll just go and get this over with I don't want to go 
course, at this point in time, I wish I'd spent way more time at Granny Gazzy's than I did, but you can't go back in time, you know. Anyway, so we, we went, and I was just sitting in the living room while they talked, and Faye, at that time, she was there, as usual, and at that time, they had this little TV circular thing that come out, just free, you pick up. I, can't, I wish I could remember the name of it. People that live in my area probably can remember it. It was kind of made out of newspaper material, but it was just, you know, just a little book like a tv guide but not the tv guide it was more of a local thing anyway she she brought it in there to me and said i want to show you this little poem that i found in here sometimes they would have things like that in it so she read she showed me the poem and it was a nice poem it was about uh, fall of the year about trees and i read it and said that's really nice saint Faye. you know thank you for sharing it with me and she said well i think you should cut it out and take it home with you so I did. I cut it out and took it home with me, you know, never realizing that just, you know, basically a week later that she'd be gone. So that's just uh, one of my sweet memories of her. But she was a really good cook. And although my cousin sent me this recipe, there's so many recipes in Granny's books and in her handwritten stuff. And at the top of it, it'll say phase, phase this or phase that. So Granny learned a lot of cooking from her too, a lot of recipes. So she was a really, along with being a mighty fine person, like Pap said, she was also a mighty fine cook. So now I'm gonna show you how to make phase chocolate cream pie. So first I'm going to go over the ingredients with you and uh, it's, I love it because it's still in her, this was like a scan so it looks like kind of like a photo now. This is still the where the my cousin had sent it to me and I printed it out all those years ago and I just have this stuck in one of my cookbooks but it's in her handwriting. So it's chocolate cream pie, one cup sugar, three tablespoons sifted flour, three tablespoons cornstarch, one third cup of cocoa, three cups of milk, a pinch of salt, one teaspoon vanilla, two egg yolks beaten, and you'll want to save your egg whites for the meringue. Uh, you mix sugar, flour, cornstarch, salt, and cocoa on top of a double, double boiler. That's what she said to do. I don't have a double boiler, so I've never done that, so I just do it in a sauce pot. Add uh, beaten eggs and milk slowly. Add vanilla and cook until thickened. Remove from heat and beat well. This makes the filling light and fluffy. Pour into 90 inch baked pie shell, top with meringue and brown. So that was her directions. Now, sometimes I do, in the beginning, I always did. I beat the chocolate afterwards and I'm gonna do that today for you. I don't always do that if I'm in a hurry, but I do think it makes it light and fluffy. And I think that's something maybe that Faye come up with on her own. Uh, Granny would tell me that about some of her recipes. She would say, uh, Faye done that because she thought this made it better or that made it better. Makes me wish so much I could talk to Faye today and ask her a lot of questions about her recipes that Granny had over the years, but of course I can't. Um, I'm using, I made, uh, you see Corey behind me, she's also making something today. So she's in the kitchen trying to prepare. But I just made my own pie crust. You can use store-bought. I'm sure you probably have a good recipe. I'll share, I'll put in the description below, I'll put a link to the ones that I make, my recipe that I use. I, it's not my recipe, one I found online and I've been using it ever since. So I'll put a link to that. And just a word about the meringue. So that's only two egg whites that you're using. So what I've found over the years, if you're not picky about how things look, you'll be fine with that. But if you are picky and you want it to be those big fluffy looking meringue, you'll need to add more egg whites than that. That's just not enough egg whites to totally cover the, the pie in those big fluffy things. Fluffy um, always reminds me of waves of the ocean like. And there's all kinds of videos out there on how to make the perfect meringue. So if, you, if you're interested in those big, big, peaks and big waves, then you can definitely find a recipe uh, or a video online showing you how to do that. But now we're gonna put it all together. So now I'm gonna mix my sugar, flour, and cornstarch, and a little pinch of salt, and the cocoa. I'm going to start adding the milk. Go ahead and add the eggs.
don't add the rest of the milk. I'm going to add the vanilla and we're going to let it cook until it gets thick. So it's beginning to thicken up. We're getting there. So you can see it's got really thick now. So now we're ready to remove it from the heat. So now according to Aunt Faye's directions, I'm going to beat the chocolate pudding before I put it, chocolate cream pie filling before I put it in there. But at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and start my big mixer, start whipping my meringue. So the theory behind beating the chocolate, according to Aunt Faye, was that it made it light and fluffy, she says. Just change the texture. I have made this lots of times though and not actually done the beating step and it's still really good. So if you don't wanna do that part, don't have to. So now we've got it all in our pie shell. We're gonna finish with the meringue. We're almost done. sure to get all the chocolate out. I've made a mess. So now once our meringue is done, we'll put, add the meringue and be ready to brown it and then let it chill before we eat it. So now if you've never made meringue before, it's just egg whites beaten with sugar. You can add a little cream of tartar if you want to, and then you just put it on top of the pie and brown it. Some people call it calf slobbers, which is funny, I think, but I've heard it called that. And like I said at the beginning of the video, there's all sorts of um, instructional videos that will show you how to make a beautiful meringue. I don't really, I'm, I'm the kind of cook that I worry about how it tastes, but I don't especially care about how it looks. So mine's not always the, the prettiest and for sure is not the, the big wavy peaks that you'll see. Also again, the two egg whites really doesn't make enough to do it justice. So you'll need to, if, you, if you're really picky about it being prettier, you'll need to add some, some extra egg whites. I added two extra egg whites to this. We're lucky that we have chicken, so we have plenty of, plenty of eggs. So I don't have to worry about that, but, but I have made the pie and just used the two egg whites and it, it will cover it. It just is not as, as thick and luscious. Once you get it all on there, one really simple way to kind of get some of those little peaks is to put your whatever you're spreading it with down and then kind of pull it back up and you'll get a few of those little peaky looking places that are really pretty and they kind of brown before the rest of it. Now when you put it in the oven to brown it, you can do it on broil or 450, something like that. But it's one of those things that you really have to watch because it can instantly burn on you. And I've done that before and it's no fun when you burn your meringue. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna brown it in the oven. I'm gonna get a little towel. Corey's trying to help me. Get a... So I just got the pie out of the oven. You can see how pretty the meringue looks once it's browned. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it chill. And then when we cut it, we'll show you what it looks like. So our chocolate pie has been in the fridge for a couple of hours now and we're gonna cut it. See how it turns out. It's so pretty. I don't know, I don't like cutting that one. Let me get my big knife. First piece of pie is always the hardest to get out. Mm. Looks 
delicious though. So you can see it sets up really firm and nice. The meringue looks good. My crust could have been prettier, but I think it'll taste good. So let's see what it tastes like. Mm. So good. Really a comfort food. I think Aunt Faye would be really pleased to know that I'm still making her recipe all these years later. Um, I think that would make her smile, and it certainly makes me smile. So I hope if you try Aunt Faye's chocolate cream pie that you'll like it as much as we do. And as always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by and help us celebrate Appalachia, which includes so many foodways that have been handed down through the generations, like Aunt Faye's chocolate cream pie.